Okay, I get it. You're sick of what's out there. You're bored. You don't want the flashy games anymore. You found this dude named Karma Cut come across your feed, and you've seen how incredibly tactical gaming can be. But you're a bit nervous. You don't know where to even start because you're worried it's going to be just too difficult. But also, you don't want to pass up on some killer deals on the Steam Summer Sale. Well, don't worry, my child. I'm here to help. Welcome to the channel, my name is Tacti. I play and cover primarily hardcore tactical shooters. You've clicked on this video because you're becoming more interested in getting into tactical shooters. Awesome. I was in the same spot. Something about games like Call of Duty and even Battlefield felt just too flashy to me. Not that they weren't fun, they just didn't provide exactly what I was looking for in a game. So I finally bought myself a PC and started dabbling in hardcore tactical shooters. And now, I'm here. So welcome again, and feel free to click that subscribe button if you find this video helpful. Now, I understand that tactical games can be a little bit intimidating, because you know what, they are. Most are very unforgiving and heavily based around teamwork, so you don't want to feel like a complete noob and let your team down. So this is what I want to offer you today. A few games that are fantastic for your first time tactical shooter. Good beginner tactical shooters in my opinion. Not really because they're completely refined, because two of these games are still in early access, but mostly because they're focused on close quarters action rather than large-scale tactics. And I think it's important to understand movement in close quarters first as more of a foundational skill to transition to the larger games like Arma or Squad. I just feel like it helps your map awareness and game sense a little bit more. So what I've got for you today are three different games, Insurgency Sandstorm, Zero Hour, and Ground Branch. Each have their own quirks and positives and negatives, but overall, certainly three of my top games played on Steam. So let's start with the best game I think you can buy right now as your first tactical shooter, Insurgency Sandstorm. A mix of both hardcore mechanics and fluid movements that promote a more casual feel. I consider it somewhat of a hybrid. There are aspects of hardcore realism that exist, you know, lower time to kill, slower reloads, limited hood, but at the same time, there are some aspects that are not so hardcore, such as jumping from this two-story building without losing a beat. These mechanics combine to create what I believe is a really good introduction into hardcore tactical shooters. That way you can decide from this experience how deep you want to dive down the tactical gaming rabbit hole. This game offers PvP and PvE modes that are primarily objective-based. For most of the game modes, the weapons you decide to use are based on the class that you choose. So during PvP, the weapons are also specific to each faction. You're going to have to get used to playing for each side this way. The game does have a multitude of weapons though, and really, really great models. So there will be plenty of weapons that you'll get to experience and master. Within the PvP realm, it also offers a domination mode, just your standard PvP experience. That way you can practice your weapon skills against real players. You know, just get used to the recoil and the movement. If that's still too difficult when you're starting out, like I said, it also hosts several PvE modes where the bots are, well, hit or miss when it comes to acting like they have a human brain. Sometimes they'll be really accurate and sometimes they'll act like dodo birds, but keep in mind, AI is very, very difficult to master. It's not easy to emulate human behavior. Just ask Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> the best part about this game is that it's still actively supported by the dev team. And even if it weren't, the game allows for modded servers so you can play a bunch of different free content with notable modders like the ISMC team. Expect to hear a lot more about them in the future. The games can range from 10 minutes to about 40 minutes depending on what kind of teams you're playing with and what kind of game mode. The weak point of this game right now, I would say, is the customization options, in the vanilla game anyway. There just aren't a whole lot of uh, cosmetic options when it comes to weapon modification, like equipment placement, alternate optics, alternate grips, but this is an area that keeps growing and they keep adding to. The hard part is just balancing it for them. The game is currently on sale for 15 bucks, which is 50% off because it's normally 30. Either price, in my opinion, is very reasonable for this game if you're getting the amount of content that this game has. If you're watching this video and missed the sale, feel free to pick this up on my game store, link down below, just to support the channel and the devs. The next game on my list is a close quarters SWAT experience. The game is Zero Hour. The game is the least content rich of these three games, but boy are they chugging along and pushing out these updates rapidly. At the making of this video, the next update comes in August with two new maps, more weapon customization, and much more with a high level of focus on realism. While each update makes the game more and more hardcore, it also makes the game that much more fun. 
The game offers both PvP and PvE game modes that are a ton of fun. The game is in early access, so there's still a ton of refining to do, but it's an incredibly enjoyable experience. And in my opinion, the game shines more in co-op or single player solo play, as you've normally got to clear an area, pick up some intel and documents, and then get out of there. There may also be a bomb to defuse. It's just a more fluid experience right now, in my opinion. PvP, on the other hand, has taken some nods from Rainbow Six Siege with attackers, defenders, traps, and so on. Unfortunately, there's no destructible environments at this time, though that could change in the future. The game only offers a few weapons right now, but has about nine total maps. I believe it's nine total maps. I think that's the correct number. There could be a couple more I'm missing, something from PvP, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, the, the weapon handling is fantastic. The early customization system is promising, though only very minimal at the moment. And the game rewards slow movements, holding angles, and making split-second decisions on, you know, whether or not to kill someone or allow him to surrender. This game is one of the best bangs for your buck right now, selling at $7.50 during the sale. Though normally it's only $12 for its original price, so grab it while it's hot, and even if you don't, 12 bucks is 12 bucks. All right, finally, a game that I wish I could say were on sale, but unfortunately they chose not to, Ground Branch. Don't worry though, it does go on sale fairly often. Currently the price runs at about $30, but like I said, sales are pretty common, especially with each update. Not sure when the next one is coming, but they do come fairly consistently, so feel free to put that on your watch list. This game's customization is the best part. You can customize your operator, your weapon, and make meme guns that will curb stomp your FPS. And trust me, that's an important feature. The game holds numerous weapons, with more added each update. Like Zero Hour, the game is in early access, but each update tends to provide a huge boost to the quality of the game. The upcoming update will bring some amazing new animations in, which is definitely needed, so everyone is very anxious and excited for the quality that that's going to bring. The game has an interesting matchmaking system, and by interesting, I mean <laughs> not at all. You really are just in a server browser to find games. It does offer both PvP and PvE in these lobbies, but there's no real system that you just press a button and search for a match, and I think this is probably its biggest downfall. It's likely hindering the experience and also the draw towards this game a little bit, but one of the great things about this game is it forces a great community, which this game does have. And if you want to organize some PvP or PvE, you could just join their Discord and make friends there. That seems to be how a lot of games are organized. Or if you want, like me, you can just lone wolf it. That's what I tend to do for a quick tactical hardcore experience. You hop in, modify your loadout to your heart's content, and then you can either shoot baddies in a terrorist hunt or look for intel and escape at the exfil. The biggest draws to this game is the customization, the focus on realism, and that it runs really, really easy on most machines. It's very, very easy for me to hop into a quick small map, which by the way, the game offers a decent amount of maps, and take out some terrorists. Personally for me, it's been a great aim trainer alternative, as well as just learning how to look at angles, how to clear rooms. It teaches you tactics, mainly because the bots can be brutal. But once you do get into some PvP or PvE, the game is a blast. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, probably mostly gentlemen. These are my best foundational tactical shooters on the market right now, at least the modern ones. I'm sure there are some older ones out there like the old Rainbow Sixes, but I wanted to be more modern with this list. If you found the video helpful and are diving into tactical shooters, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I appreciate the time you took to get all the way to the end here, and if you're here now, you're a true hero. Thanks again, and until the next one, stay tactical.